Welcome to Change Pace Poetry, number 70 in a series. Uh, the poem today will be No Razzmatazz from In Vitro. And of course, uh, here's the book. I forget, we have a visual here. Um, <clears throat> No razzmatazz. This is a not altogether tongue-in-cheek autobiographical fragment and essay on the impulse of rhyme and line. Part one. Well, there's several parts here. I won't. I won't uh, probably remember. There's three parts. I'll try to remember to to tell you when we're going from part to part. Part 1. His first fedora, razzmatazz, a double-breasted overcoat of light brown-yellow like topaz with flannel scarf to warm his throat, made him look old enough to vote, or so he hoped, his freshman year at Trinity, so cold, so drear. A Florida cracker far from home, no transportation but his feet, He'd do as one would do in Rome. Still, he felt duty-bound to greet an unknown woman on the street by lightly tipping his fedora as if she were wrapped up in angora. Alas, no clothes can make the man, and wearied by the nutmeg's chill, with English lit his major plan, he transferred south to Chapel Hill. He double majored for the thrill of studies in philosophy and Greek, pursuing all with glee. B.A. in hand, but no career, he steered himself to graduate school. <laughs> Until his life's work got more clear, he guessed theology be cool, but by the end he felt a fool for dressing like a grieving mother who came to father? Oh, no, brother. Plus, parish work was umpteen faces that might perk up an introvert who savored food and fireplaces. But calling spent the introvert. When he went calling, he'd exert such energy it sapped his brain and wrapped his feet in iron chain. In his hometown, Deland, High church Episcopalians spiced their stage with incense pots, wild, real, and lurch. <laughs> Yet choral arts there did assuage in staid procession or in the cage of chancel concert teenage kids who elsewhere might have flipped their lids. But now, how leave the ministry, respectably? Two ways to go. Run off and get a higher degree. Run off the warden's wife in tow. But he was happily married, so he and his own wife, two kids too, ran off to grad school. Start anew. Six weeks he quit. How earn a living? Somerset mom had liked the state for jobs that weren't too unforgiving that would not slog home with him late. Mom did thus manage to create short stories that embodied his own view of mind's despairing biz. Showbiz? Could he embrace those arts? A center which presented dance, symphonies, <laughs> how he loved Mozart's, and opera, offered work by chance encounter, he snapped up at a glance. Across proscenium's showbiz glitz, the human spirit seeking flits. And showbiz topped the church for sure. A hotshot clergyman he'd known when asked the ministry's allure said, I work spotlights all my own, direct in my artistic zone, preside as CEO of souls, and Sundays play most leading roles. Huh. 
Let extroverts direct, preside, and play the leading roles, he thought, enough to strive and take small pride, supporting spirits juggernaut as others chop the Gordian knot. But what arc lamp and lens could weave his razzmatazz and its knots cleave? Part 2 Was it the novel that his dad embraced by writing three of them on portable and legal pad, bold, manly plots, his stratagem, high frontier, his creme de la creme? He authored one, was not for him. No spirit overtopped its brim. But urged to map a burly plot, a must that can't plot like his dad's, he launched the second not worth squat. He'd skinned too many agents' ads. He sought relief in writing scads of short and skinny free verse poems. Though those had votes, they all lacked ohms. These skinny poems just fizzled out. The lightning flashed and shot to ground. It popped right down the water spout. The bolts, he felt, what might propound them? bright and life played in the realm. How are those votes, oh sorry, how arc those votes through tungsten's olds? How might he learn to rhyme his poems? Why service a tennis ball, no net? How learn with frost to stretch it back? How play the net? not be in debt to move so overused, they thwack balls back as though from sleep's bivouac. He'd track where rhyme and meter led to bright new light they might well shed. Such brightness often made him blink, surprised to stumble on a view and overlook that was in sync with more than he had known he knew. Why, he'd not dreamed, he had a clue. Thus, deep within each heaving lung, his voice fledged wings for mother tongue. Part 3 She chants of consciousness man shares, or slowly withers up of drought. She greens his outlook when she dares him, gaze beyond your known redoubt and venture on a walkabout, seek vistas new to your eyes reach, I, mother tongue, will give you speech. I am the future, present, past, I'm morphic resonance, I form chaotic thought and feeling, massed like iron filings, quick to swarm magnetic force fields, and transform themselves with order on a saucer, looking to force fields for their author. I do not answer when called anal. My rhyme and meter help you scroll the ground wave fields of Gaia's channel. Now bear with me and slowly troll those force fields we too can cajole. No razzmatazz to break real news till consciousness is what folks choose. Now, um, before saying goodbye, I want to invite you to, um, to visit my website, jamiesonspoetry.com. See all the videos in the series with texts. Better, order the books on Amazon.com. Search for Leland Jamieson. Thank you. I think you'll find the texts helpful since my uh, enunciation isn't all that good. And um, I hope you enjoy rereading them. I'll see you next time.